Welcome to As Received with Eddie Kimani. This is a vlog where I share thought-provoking, motivational, uplifting, feel-good stories that I stumble upon online or receive from writers from all over who'd rather write than sit in front of a camera like I am right now. Of course, this is with their blessings. I intend to use this platform for social good where I tell or narrate their stories. If you feel you have a good story to share that may impact someone else's life, Positively, please do share. My email address is down there. Now, our first story in this series is Men and Marriage. This is by none other than Jackson Biko, a super top genius of a writer, I must say. He writes for Business Daily, True Love Magazine, and many other publications, and has an amazing book called Drunk. Yes, it's titled Drunk, and you can find it online. Believe me, it's worth the buzz and your time. Grab a copy and enjoy it. By the way, if you'd like uh, the text to this story, the link to that is down below. Enjoy. At some point, Julius held Biko's hand and pulled him aside under the flashing disco lights. Wore a face that he thought was serious, but which in fact wasn't. Nobody can successfully pull off a serious face when they're tipsy. Listen, Julius said, I didn't like how you called our friend an idiot that day. Back in December, Biko had had a tiff with one of their friends in a WhatsApp group they are in. Long story, Biko told Julius he didn't mean it in the true sense of the word. Come on, we call each other names all the time in that group, but it's never that serious. He behaved idiotically, but he isn't an idiot, you know. Well, yeah, but go easy on him. He's going through a lot, Julius said gravely. Biko asked him what a lot is. Julius said, he doesn't know much. He hadn't told him, but it's marriage, he suspected. Biko didn't know how that is. How is he to know how that is when he doesn't tell any of them? He doesn't have to talk to us, you know. All I'm saying is let's go easy on him. Let's cut him some slack. He will come around, Biko said, sour. By the way, where did you buy that jacket? I like it. Julia said, I have a guy. Of course, their friend isn't going to talk to them about marriage. We only, know, or we only talk marriage to our marriage counselors, and even for it to get to that point, things are so bad, the marriage is hanging on a string. Sometimes we will talk to our church elder because, well, that's like talking to God's representative, and God's representative signed the non-disclosure agreement with God. So who do we men really talk to when our marriages are going pear-shaped? When you spent two million shillings on a wedding two years ago, but now its wheels seem to be coming apart and you hang tight hoping for something to give. Who do men talk to when their sense of manhood is diminished in marriage? When they feel their voice is going, when they feel like they're standing in quicksand, when they are in way over their heads in debt and the wife has to no clue. Because we know most women sit over wine or sangria or whiskey with what they call BFF. And they pour their problems in a corner of a bar or a restaurant and sometimes even cry in a serviette. First, I can't even imagine crying in front of another man, even if he's crying with me. That would be double worse. Secondly, even if I'm to tell another man my problems, I won't go deep because that means I get vulnerable before him, burden him with my woes, get weak before him and perhaps end up embarrassing him in the process. Lastly, I ain't drinking no sangria. When men talk, we talk superficially. Our conversations go something like this. So, last time we spoke, you mentioned that Mama was threatening to go for her, to, to go to her folks. Ah, she didn't. Threats do, so you know. You resolve things at a resolve. Can you really resolve these things? You, you fix this, another comes up. They keep coming up like boils, man. True. One old man, he must be about 70, told him that he still fights with his wife. He was like, I, what can you be possibly fighting about at your age? He said, you will always fight with your wife over something or the other. It's how marriage stays interesting. Kwanza, now at TCU, she's fighting me about color. She says she doesn't understand where my money goes. <laughs> Do you know where her money goes? Even the CIA can't successfully trace a woman's money. You guy. <laughs> Kwanza huko, she's stressing me where my money goes. Ha, I don't even know how much she makes. I love her, I do everything. Ha, she just 
sends money to her parents until they are building a house in Shags. That house has been under construction since before Thika Highway. Or Thika Road became a superhighway. <laughs> Crazy, yeah? Things will be okay. So now we buy another round, um, uh, you've got to go for that event you mentioned. Then that story dies there. We all trudge through marriages in silence, like mules carrying heavy loads. We don't offload. We never offload like women do. When you offload, you get time to stretch a bit, and when you get the load back on, it seems easier. Carry your loads for years, and one day you will collapse, or you will throw your load in a river. We never meet other men carrying loads at the rest points and ask, Boss, how do you manage that load of yours? Because we are men, our load is our load. We die with it. We are stoic. So, here is the kicker, or if you like, the meat of this story, written by Jackson Biko. Biko is starting a series called Men and Marriage. It's going to run pretty much for the better part of 2019. Then towards the tail end, he will do another one on women and marriage. Biko wants to speak to men in marriages because he's curious and because as men, we don't share a lot. When we are mad, we don't go on FB or Facebook, if you like, and write cryptic messages like, this year I choose me, I put me first. We lay low when we are happy. We are happy in silence, and when we are sad and struggling, we are the same. He wants to hear, or rather to wear, a breathing apparatus and get underneath this male phenomenon in marriage. To mean, Biko wants to talk to all sorts of men, men who have been married for tens of years, like 40 years, and ask them what trick that is. How does one remain married for that long when some are barely breathing in third year? He wants to talk to men who have lost their jobs and still have to be head of the home during that period of economic disillusionment. How do you lead if you can't put a roof over your family's head? Where does your voice come from? How does being broke as a husband affect your leadership and your relation? He wants to talk to those brave men who have two wives, two official wives, as in they know each other, as in the other knows the other's name and where she works, as in you leave the one house and say, babe, today I think I'll be spending the night in Regina's house, as in you have two sets of belts and aftershave in each house. How have you not even died mysteriously and your body never found? What kind of a woman agrees to that? Is it hypnosis? Do you have something on her that the police might want? Where do you sleep on Wednesday and Saturday? How much do you spend to sustain two families and what does it do to your emotional health? But the most important question is not how, but why. Biko wants to talk to men who struggle with substance addiction in marriage and how they view the impact of their habit on their marriage. He wants to speak to men who can't father children or men who are raising children they thought were theirs. Men who have deposited their sperms in numerous small plastic containers in dozens of clinics in a bid to get a baby and come out short each time. What does that do to you as a man and how does it affect the stability of your marriage and how does it change the marriage? He wants to speak to all the married men, men in their 70s who were married before Voice of Kenya and how they view marriage now as men and if there's anything at all we can learn from this man of yore. Biko also wants to speak to men who are in abusive marriages, emotional and physical abuse. What amounts to being abused emotionally in a marriage for a man? How does it, how do you seek help? Men who are married to violent women who chase you around the house with a pan and sit on your head until you feel your fingers go numb. He also wants to speak to violent men and pick into and hopefully try and understand that place where their rage boils from. He'd love to know how you can fold a fist and punch a woman who weighs 58 kgs. Not that women who weigh 89 kgs should take a punch, but how do you fold a fist and swing it into a woman's fragile face? What demon leaves behind that punch? Where does that ugliness come from? What ignites it? He'd love to talk to a married man about sex. Why does it, at some point, Become like cutting a tree with a blunt saw. What's our role in keeping it, keeping it exciting? Why do we naturally fall into missionary? <laughs> it would be nice if you can meet a man who has erectile dysfunction and ask him what he would want women to know about that. How women can help a man with erectile dysfunction. 
It's not a conversation he will be excited to take on, but I'm sure he's up for it. Biko wants to speak to men who like other men, but are married to women. What's that all about? How is it living a life like that, a life of make-believe, living for image and expectations? He wants to speak to men who are about to get into marriage, wedding set ETC and the expectations of their wives in waiting, and what they think is their role as husbands in waiting. Perhaps some of you older veterans can tell them that nobody wears lingerie to bed daily because even Christmas comes once a year. Some days it's a long old t-shirt written, saving people money since 1998. Biko wants to speak to divorced men at 29 and divorced men at 54 and what the journey is pre and post divorce. He wants to speak to senior bachelors and ask why they are still playing the field at 49. He wants to speak to men who are married to spouses who live very far from them in a different country and hear what distance does to that marriage. He hears those are the best marriages because you don't have to keep telling someone not to leave their socks all over the place. He wants to speak to widowed men and what it means to suddenly be the mother and father. And you'd have to look at homework and learn that the lady who teaches one of yours swimming is called Mary. He also wants to talk to men who are very happy in their marriages. Those who didn't get married last month. What is happiness? What road leads to happiness? What is a happy marriage according to these men? Are these the men who during fights say, okay, time out. I think I'll go for a walk. Can we talk about this when we have all steamed off and then text the wife on the cheek on his way out? How does one get to that nirvana? Biko will not publish names if you want anonymity. Biko will call you anything, a city, a fruit, even Pontius Pilate if you so wish. It doesn't matter. What matters is your story and he will treat it with the respect, of course, it deserves. You have a story? Email Biko on BikoZulu at gmail.com. That is BikoZulu at gmail.com. There you have it, as received.